Hello and welcome to the Greek for the Week. My podcast this week was on the last part of Luke chapter 2, and so I picked a verse with some interesting Greek grammar, a genitive absolute. So let's begin. Kaihote egenato eton dodica. And when uh, 12 years, uh, and when, well, and when 12 of years came to be, uh, something like that, when he, when he was 12 years old, uh, and a binon tone auton. Okay, this is called a genitive absolute. And in a genitive absolute, you have a noun or pronoun in the genitive, auton, and then a participle in the genitive, which is what we have here with uh, anabanonton. And uh, my aunt is an active participle, so it is an active participle. Anabino, all the letters of the present stem are there, so it's present, it's a present active participle. Own in this case is genitive uh, masculine plural referring to um, uh, Jesus and Joseph and Mary um, and probably others. Well, actually we know it's there are others there too, both family and um, compatriots. So, um, and when 12 of, 12 of years came to be, while they were ascending, it's kind of what we do, we make the, the pronoun into the subject, they, and then they ascending, uh, and then we could say while they were ascending, as they were ascending, something like that. It's hard to bring this straight into um, into English. I might also add that again, we've seen this before. It's the it's the story verb, and it came to pass kind of thing. Uh, and it came to pass when twelve years of age came to pass, something like that. Um, Gen tells me it's aorist. There's the augment to confirm it. To is third person singular. To would normally be a middle or passive ending. Amen, uh, ueto. But um, uh, it's this word is deponent. Gin, oh my, it's deponent, which means that it, it looks middle or passive, but you've translated actively. You can't make became passive anyway. So this is aorist, deponent, indicative, because indicative because the short vowel before the ending. Um, aorist, deponent, indicative, third singular from gin, oh my. And when 12 of years came to be, while they were ascending a, according to the custom of the feast. So they've gone down for Passover. Notice that ethos uh, relates to custom. Anyway, ethics was originally thought to have something to do with uh, the customs of a people. Um, I talked very briefly about that in the podcast. So according to the custom of the feast and um, teleosanton, uh, katato ethos tes or tes kai teleo santon. Okay, so teleo santon, my aunt is an active participle, so we have the aunt telling me it's an active participle. Sigma alpha in this case tells me it's an aorist active participle. Own is still genitive masculine plural, and, and it is a continuation of the genitive absolute. So as they were ascending and they had completed, um, I'm, uh, so I would normally translate a aorist active participle in my stage one translation, something like having completed, um, which is what I did here. And then um, when we put it into kind of good English um, and we say something like, um, as they were ascending to the temple and had completed, what did they completed? They had completed tas hemeros, the days. Um, Ento hupostrephein autus. Um, okay, ento infinitive. Six out of seven, seven infinitives end in I, and the other one is ain. This is a present active infinitive. So it's something like in the to return. But that's not good English. Uh, in the return them, um, that, you know, in the return them, um, we have to play games. It's, I call these infinitive games. And the ento infinitive game is a temporal game. It's a timing game. Uh, and we, we translate it something like while, while they were returning. And the subject, quote unquote, of an infinitive is in the accusative case. It's accusative masculine plural. So not a lot of really fun grammar, second semester Greek grammar in this in this verse. Luke, Luke, Luke's a guy. He's he's got some some Greek. Luke's got Greek. You heard it here. A while they were returning. Okay, so let's get the train of thought again here. And 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 when 12 of years came about, while they were ascending according to the custom of the feast, 
And after they had completed the days, uh, while they were returning, they're going back to, to Nazareth, um, Epemenen Jesus, Jesus remained. Jesus is a subject because he's nominative here with the sigma here. Um, even though he comes after the verb in English, we're going to translate him before the verb because he's the subject. Jesus remained. This is from Hupomeno. Um, that epsilon snuck in there is an augment because compound verbs, hupo, meno, the, in compound verbs, the augment goes before the, the core verb, not the preposition added on the front. Um, uh, new with an epsilon in front of it is almost always a movable new, throw it away. Woo! Epsilon's a very common third person singular, past tense ending, active indicative past tense ending. So I've, I'm, I have two, two choices for a past tense, either imperfect or aorist. Um, the internal lengthening here, uh, this is this is a called a liquid verb because its stem ends in nu. A liquid verb is a consonant that will go on as long as you have breath. So uh, those are liquid consonants. So um, li liquid verbs don't, they have in their contract some special stuff. Uh, their contract says, I don't do sigmas. And also, um, uh, well, in the uh, aorist tense, they do this internal lengthening. Epsilon goes to epsilon iota. It's kind of weird. It, it really is weird. So this is aorist. It is aorist active indicative third singular from hupomeno. Uh, Jesus remained. Okay, while they were returning, Jesus remained. That is hopais, Jesus the, the boy, remained in Jerusalem. He remained in Jerusalem. Kai uk egnosan hoi gones autu. And the parents of him did not know it. They didn't know it. Um, okay, so eg egnosan is the uh, sigma alpha, has me thinking aorist. Augment confirms it. Uh, this nu is a third person plural. It's a real ending. It's not a movable nu because it's not a nu with an epsilon in front of it. Um, it's a nu with an alpha in front of it. It's real. It's the real hair. It's not a wig. Uh, it's not a toupee. So this is a third person plural uh, ending, egnosan. Um, Actually, I don't think the sigma, actually, I think I just may have, um, I may have flubbed there. Uh, I think the son is, is the ending and the gano is what tells me it's aorist. So forgive me, I was testing you, it was just testing you. So son is actually a third person plural ending here. Um, the things I said earlier could have been true, but not on this particular word. So this is a third person plural ending, an active ending and gano, I gano that's aorist. Um, it's related to the word no and it's translated no. See the the gamma and kappa are similar parts of the mouth, palatals. Uh, there's the N, there's the O, I'm sorry, there's the O. Okay, so this is indeed aorist, active, indicative, third plural from gnosko. Um, the, his parents didn't know. Um, gones is nominative masculine plural. Uh, it doesn't look like it because it's a weird word, but the article never lies. It's nominative masculine plural. Okay, so let's put it all together after all that grammatical speak. And when 12 of years came to be, as they were ascending according to the custom of the feast, and after they had completed the days while they were returning, Jesus remained, Jesus the boy remained in Jerusalem, and the parents of him, they did not know it. So there you have it, Luke 2. 42 and 43 are Greek verses for Zavik.